Welcome, my friends. Welcome to my world. I'm your host, Kevin Rutherford. It is Wednesday, August 24th. That means it's time for a health day. It is Destination Health. Right now, we're going to open the phone line, so start dialing. We'll get to those calls here in just a little bit. I'll also be joined later today by Lauren for After Hours with Kevin and Lauren, and we will probably do live Q&A today on the website as well. So we've got a big day lined up, a lot going on. Stick with us. If you've got a question, a comment, a topic, anything at all to do with health, go ahead and line up those calls right now. 855-950-3835. I've got a couple things I want to talk about here in the open. Then I'll get to those calls, so start dialing. All right, where do I want to start today? Uh, Let's start with the whole big picture of where we're going with food quality in this country, food advice. Uh, You know, for the last couple of years, I've been optimistic that maybe things were going to get better. We are seeing a lot more small regenerative farms. I think that's an awesome trend. I hope that continues. We are seeing more access to good, high-quality food products. I hope that continues. And yet, overall, I think the picture is going to get worse, not better. I think that, that the people who have found the natural health world, holistic, paleo, functional, I wish we had one good word to that we could apply to this that everybody would kind of recognize those people are going to get outrageously healthy. We've already seen it. We know the proof. Just diet alone. I'm going to talk about going beyond diet today, but just diet alone has a huge impact. It's life-changing. We know it. We have thousands, tens of thousands of examples of it now. But unfortunately, in the big picture, I think things are going to get worse. Uh, when we look at this whole stupid food compass thing that the government came up with, you know, first we had the food pyramid that may have destroyed more people's health than anything else in the history of the world. Then we went to the my plate, which was the same advice, just a different way of showing it. Still really, really bad nutritional advice. Now we have the food compass. And I think it might have gotten worse because now they just kind of compare foods. You just look at foods now and say, oh, yeah, I should eat this because it's healthier than that, according to the food compass. But let's look at just one example, one example from the food compass, McDonald's pancakes, specifically McDonald's pancakes. Now, Pancakes in general are really, really bad for us. Think about it. They are wheat and sugar. That, that's pretty much all we're getting in pancakes is wheat and sugar and probably some bad oil too. It, it's total junk food. And because it's McDonald's, it's going to be even worse because McDonald's does everything they can to drive the cost of their food down as low as possible. And the only way to do that is to cut corners on quality. So this is even worse. But yet, according to the government's food compass, McDonald's pancakes with syrup, that's 477 calories, I could care less, 41 grams of sugar. 41 grams. That meal, McDonald's pancakes with syrup, scored higher than a meat and cheese omelet. Here's two other foods that scored higher than a meat and cheese omelet. Cheerios, highly processed refined grains and sugar. Cheerios scored higher than a meat and cheese omelet. Get this one. An ice cream cone. Sugar, milk, refined grains, all kinds of nasty fillers and chemicals and crap. And an ice cream cone, according to the government, scores higher than a meat and cheese omelet. Now, if you ask them, they're going to say, oh, but that meat and cheese omelet has all that fat in there. Yeah, we know that's good. Can't believe we are still not. we're, We're judging food on its fat content alone. Forget everything else that this is all about fat and it is so wrong. 
you know, if all we're doing is comparing two foods like I just did, you know, is is it true that McDonald's pancakes with syrup are healthier than a meat and cheese omelet or ice cream cones are healthier than a meat and cheese omelet? If all we're doing is comparing two foods, I think there's a pretty easy test here. It's not really complicated, not really expensive. And I think it would be very, very telling. Here's all you have to do. What I want you to do is I want you to eat nothing but ice cream cones for the next 30 days. Let's see what happens to your health. Nothing but ice cream cones. So every time you get hungry, all you can eat is an ice cream cone. Let's do it for 30 days. Or you can pick Cheerios if you want. You get to eat all the Cheerios you want, but that's all you can eat for 30 days. Or McDonald's pancakes and syrup. You pick. You get to pick any of those three. Hell, we'll even stack the deck in in your favor. You get to pick any of those three. So when you're hungry, you have to either either eat an ice cream cone, (laughs) McDonald's pancakes with syrup, or Cheerios. We'll give you some variety in your diet. Or when you get hungry, you can eat a meat and cheese omelet. And to throw a little bit of variety in that one, you get to change the meat and the cheese whenever you want. So you have eggs, you have meat and cheese. You can pick different meat, different cheese. Could it throw a little bit of variety in there? Let's do this for 30 days. Does anybody doubt what the results are going to be? It's so simple to prove that this is just total bullshit, again, coming from our government about what we should eat. I wish the government would just get out of this completely. They're ignorant. They're corrupt when it comes to food. They should just get out of the, we could save so much money. Everything that has to do with food in the government, just get rid of it. The government has no business being in our food supplier telling us what we should eat or not. They have a horrible track record of killing people and they should stop doing it. But they're not going to. So you need to know anything coming out of the government about food. You should absolutely ignore and do the opposite of whatever the hell it is they're telling you. All right. So now the topic I want to talk about today, and it does kind of um, tie into this. Oh, one other thing, since we're talking about the food supply, and um, I had mentioned the product Balance of Nature um, gets an awful lot of uh, press, and they run a lot of commercials, and I'm sure a lot of people buy this product. And I, I've said from the beginning, I think this probably has some issues. It seems so obvious. It's just you know, basically freeze-dried fruit and vegetables. And even on one of their commercials, they actually make the statement, there will never be an argument about whether fruits and vegetables are healthy. There will never be an argument. Well, the problem with that is there already is an argument. We're no longer convinced that fruits and vegetables are the healthiest thing we should be eating. It's not even close. Should we be eating them at all? Or were they just really kind of an emergency food, a fill-in? But even if we should be eating them, and we should probably if we're metabolically healthy in the right amounts, but we should be eating the healthiest version. And the big thing about this product that really, really bothers me, um, one, I looked and it's loaded with kale. Kale's loaded with oxalates. When we concentrate that, we're concentrating the oxalates. That could be a problem for a lot of people. I'm pretty sure it would be a problem for me. But they also didn't bother to use organic produce for this. So we're concentrating pesticides and herbicides and glyphosate. Um, Actually, I've got a couple quotes out now, requests for quotes. Um, Oh, I just drew a blank on the name i'm sorry somebody sent me some um unopened um bottles of balance of nature fruits and veggies thank you for that um i I asked somebody and they said they had some left over they weren't taking it anymore they sent it to me Uh, i'm working with a couple labs i'm requesting quotes on getting this tested um right now the problem is it looks like i'm gonna have to work with two different labs one i want it tested for glyphosate i think i found a good lab that can do that at a 
sort of reasonable cost. Uh, but then I also want to test for oxalates and phytates and lectins and other things that are naturally present in vegetables that we don't want. I also have a question, and I don't know why I can't find an answer to this. I, I guess I just need to dig a little deeper. Um, when we freeze dry something, and technically, from what I understand, all we're getting rid of is the water. So what happens to like sugar when we freeze dry something? I can't believe that if I take this, I'm getting all this sugar that I would have gotten in like 10 bananas or whatever the hell they claim is in here. I just, I wonder what happens. We can't be getting everything the food has except water. I, I just, if anybody knows or if anybody has any good research on that, let me know. Every time I go look, for some reason, I get frustrated. I'm pretty good at research. I just need to make it a priority and stick with it till I figure it out. Um, but I'm going to do some more work on that. The issue I want to talk about today has to do with the stress protocol. I want to give you an update on where we are on that and why it's going to be so important and why I think this might be the breakthrough we've really been looking for, well, for over eight years now. Um, so I'll go back and kind of go through the history. When we first decided to do this health thing, I started reading all the books. I went back to school, uh, went through the NTAs program and started working with a lot of people and we immediately noticed a pattern. And back then we kind of went grain free first, then low carb, then very low carb and keto. And we wrote our first course about keto. We developed our own keto diet, NDK nutrient dense keto. And we were getting amazing results, no doubt, we still do. But there was always that call. And I had so many of these in the beginning. And it would be my husband and I started eating keto together and I'm so frustrated. He lost weight. His clothes are falling off of him. It's so easy for him. I'm eating exactly like he's eating and I'm not getting any results. And our first thought, and I don't know where this thought came from, and a lot of us were just repeating it. And sometimes that's what we do till we figure things out. Our first thought was that keto was too extreme for women, that there wasn't enough carbohydrates. Now, I don't know why we came to that conclusion, whoever did, but it started to spread around the natural health community. And so we need to add more carbohydrates back into their diet. But nobody, nobody ever explained why it was the carbohydrates that were the problem? What, what, were, what were carbohydrates going to fix? I don't know why we went down that path, but it didn't work. So we said, well, maybe if you're a woman and you tried keto and it's not working, maybe you should eat more of a paleo-based diet. Don't worry about carbs. Just worry about food quality. Well, food quality is one of the most difficult things about this. You really have to make it a point to order your food from very specific places and you have to be able to store more food and it, it, it adds a, a level of difficulty to this. But I, I have a feeling it's more important than what we've been saying and glyphosate may be one of the reasons why. But we, we I don't know why we told women you must need more carbohydrates and it didn't work. And then we said, okay, well, you're more complicated hormonally, so we're going to have to work on this, and hormones are all tied up with our stress, and you're just going to have to lower your stress levels. Unfortunately, our advice about how to lower stress levels was wrong. Meditation, mindfulness, there's nothing wrong with those things, but they will not fix this problem. We have to get women's hormones in balance and women are just more complicated hormonally and then women go through a huge shift in their hormones you know in their 40s and 50s and that wreaks havoc and many times those were the women who were struggling the most and not getting the results even though they were being pretty strict about the way they ate so we have been fighting this for eight years and I really have never found a good solution. 
And we just don't see a lot of results until now. I really think that we've figured this out. And it is the stress protocol. And the difference is you can't just avoid stress. That's what we've been telling everybody. There's too much stress in our life. You have to avoid stress. You have to lower stress. You have to, you know, meditate all day long. And guess what? That wasn't working either. And then we said, oh, look, there's this whole group of supplements called adaptogens. And they help our body deal with stress. And we have the science to prove it. Except when we tried to use those supplements for people, they did absolutely nothing. And I said that almost from day one. Eight years ago, we started recommending adaptogens for people, and it was not helping this problem at all. Then when carnivore came along, we saw some women try carnivore, and we got better results with carnivore than we did with keto which led me to believe maybe we got the whole carbohydrate thing completely backwards. Maybe it wasn't that women needed more carbohydrates. Maybe they needed even less than men. And boy, you say that and some people still today, some natural health practitioners, oh no, no, that's, but I'm starting to believe that may be true. And that may be why we got better results with some women with carnivore than we did even with paleo and certainly better than keto but not enough we still had women who were doing a lot of things right and i'm following several people watching and i've been paying attention for years they're doing several things right many things they're still not getting the results we want they're way healthier than when they ate the standard american diet no doubt about that but we're not getting the exact results we're looking for yet with women. And the breakthrough is this stress protocol. So I'm really excited about the stress protocol. And I think this is the final breakthrough for women. And we've also had men who suffer from the same thing. They do all the right stuff. They don't get the results. It's a little more rare, but it happens. We now know that weight loss and weight gain. And that's one of the things these women are struggling with. They, they're they not able to lose weight the way everybody else does when they eat very low carb, carnivore, keto. And then we know that if they're not losing weight, there are other factors here as well. We know that weight loss is all about hormones. It's not about calories. You can eat a lot of calories and never gain weight. It's not about calories. Or you can eat very, very low calorie and not lose weight, which is really frustrating and almost seems impossible, but it happens. So it's not about calories. It's about hormones. What's the master hormone? Insulin. What triggers insulin? Sugar and carbohydrates. So maybe we keep triggering this insulin response Even in a really healthy diet, we're triggering it, maybe not as much, but it's still enough to mess with the hormones. And I don't have a complete explanation of why, and I'm not sure anybody does. And I haven't found anybody else who has really solved this. Now, I know there are practitioners out there who specialize in hormones and hormone replacement therapy and bioidentical hormones. And honestly, I don't see those people getting a lot of really good results either. I've had people who have tried it, didn't really see any results. This works, and I want to prove it. I don't have enough proof yet, but I want to prove it. So there's a couple things we're working on. One, I have to finalize or or at least formalize the protocol a little more than it is right now. Although if you're interested, and I know a lot of people ask, it is on healthytribe.com. If you go to healthytribe.com and you look over on the left, I know we get this question all the time. I want to start the protocol. How do I know what to do? Uh, If you look on the left, uh, second menu item down, first one is home. And then after that is discovery. And right there under discovery, you'll see Uh, the course Healthy Webinar. If you click on that, and then you can go to um, Our Lifestyle is at War, Living Wild. Um, We have the protocol 
and I believe it, it's also in courses. Let me see if we have that in courses somewhere yet. I don't, and if it's available. Um, we're going to make this easier to access, but it's, it's already there. Uh, if you go to courses, you'll see a healthy webinar. And again, you can click on that and go to um, the different. And we have other webinars in there. There's one on canning. There's one on making the yogurt. The yogurt is absolutely a part of this protocol, by the way. This really uh, is our second big protocol that we created ourselves. You know, many of the things we teach, whether it was paleo or, uh, you know, digestion or all the other things we talk about, you know, we didn't develop those things. We learned them. Um, But nutrient-dense keto in our first course, that was something we created from scratch. It was a lot of work, took the whole team. This is the same way. This is a big program. It's going to take the whole team. And up until now, Um, I've been doing about 95% of all this work and that's just the way it has to be. And now it's time to get the team involved so we can kind of get this thing formalized, get all the details worked out. And we're also, I'm going to throw this out there. We're not ready yet. So we don't have any answers on this, but one of the ways I want to kick this off is with some sort of a challenge and we've got to put together all the details on this, but I'm kind of thinking out loud. Uh, We're going to do it internally. We're going to offer it to all of our our employees a 30 day I think don't don't get stuck on the details here uh, a 30 day challenge and my goal would be to get people to commit to doing this protocol every day for 30 days straight now you don't have to do this protocol every day but it, it seems to me that if we can get somebody to do it for 30 days straight, one, you kind of lock in that habit, but two, you get incredible results. It, it, it's amazing how much you can accomplish in 30 days if we do this protocol every day. And the entire protocol, even with the shower, is less than 45 minutes now. I'm really excited about how I've really tightened this up and it's less time and more effective than the original version. So now we just got to kind of get this thing formalized, get all the documentation done. Um, and I, like I said, I think we're going to create a challenge out of this. So we're going to do it internally with our employees and team here at Let's Truck. And I think we're also going to open it up Uh, maybe 10 to 20 people. Uh, I don't want too many because I'm going to be working with people pretty intensely in this program because I need to get a lot of feedback. So we're probably thinking somewhere between 10 and 20 people we would open this up to. This will eventually become a course and a program, uh, and it will be a paid program, obviously. This initial kind of guinea pig round um, we'll probably offer to people at half of what it's going to cost when it's finished because we appreciate the fact that they know it's not going to be completely smooth. There's going to be some bumps and we're going to be working some things out. So um, it, it will be a great opportunity for a lot of people that want to jump in and join us here in the beginning. But I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I finally have a way to help women who just are not getting the results and we've tried everything else. And and I'll tell you, it's going to come down to several pieces of this. It's the protocol itself. Um, we may start calling this a workout, a, a routine. Um, it involves the four pieces I've been talking about that hasn't changed. There are four key pieces to this. And the protocol is... The, the way we implement this and each little piece is important. The order we do them in makes a difference. So we'll work through all of that in the, uh, in the challenge when we do this, but it's the, the workout routine involves the breathing and light and heat therapy. And we combine those two. That's one of the ways we cut the time way down on this. So right now I am working with multiple light sources. So we have far infrared, which is what the blanket is, by the way, that we sell in our store, the My High Blanket. And the far infrared is the most beneficial. 
That's why we started with that. But there's near infrared, mid infrared, and other spectrums of just red light. And we need other devices to create those. So right now I've combined this new tunnel style uh, infrared sauna. And um, it gives me enough room to put another light device inside of the tunnel that creates those other types of light. And we are currently working to see if this could be manufactured into one product. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to pull that off or not. So those that we've combined the light therapies and there is a way of doing it with the products that are on the market right now. It's not totally convenient. It's kind of a little bit of a hack, but it's working. So in that 20 minutes, we're getting all the benefits of the breathing and we're getting all the benefits of all of the different uh, red light and infrared spectrums. And it's 20 minutes feels amazing. I'm just blown away by how much I like doing the breathing while I'm doing the heat and light therapy together. At that point, you are energized, your body's well oxygenated, and it's time to move into the resistance part of it, the X3 bar, if you have the bar. That's 10 minutes, and we're done, and I've changed the workout on that now. I'm really excited about that change. And then the final part is the cold shower. So we have the heat and light therapy, the breathing, the resistance training, and the cold exposure, whether it's a cold shower, cold plunge, whatever it might be. You know, when I outline it right now, it seems so darn simple. And it is outrageously effective. And I am excited about being able to prove it. I've got the numbers, but it's just me. I mean, nobody else has really done this yet. But I have to believe with all the research, all the reading that we are going to see these exact same results. And now there are a couple people who are doing this, not formally with me, but responding. And that's where I'm getting the feedback from some women that this is finally working for them. And they weren't even doing all four. They were still getting really good results. I'm excited about this. Now we throw, we can throw in a couple other things that even make this better. The El Ruderai yogurt. I'm a big believer in this as part of this whole protocol because the El Ruderai yogurt really seems to have a positive impact on hormones for everybody, both men and women. It increases testosterone and oxytocin. And that seems to be a really good thing. So I'm excited about that as well, adding the El Ruderai yogurt to this. And the one other thing, and I know... Boy, if you buy every device that I have right now to do this, it can get pretty darn expensive. The vibroplate, I, I think that there's actually more to the whole vibroplate thing than, than even I thought. So we're going to put out the whole kit and caboodle, the whole ball of wax, and you can pick and choose what you're going to do based on time, budget, whatever it might be, and just know the more you do, the better results you're going to get. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be talking about that a whole lot more uh, real soon, by the way. Um, we're ready to, to roll something out and keep moving forward with this. Uh, I had a couple other things, but the phone calls are starting to line up. So I'm going to find out what's on your mind today. We're going to get started in Wyoming. Ken, welcome to the program. Good morning, Kevin. I was going to give you some feedback on... My vitamin D results, I uh, sent you a message and you answered it on ra radio or whatever. <clears throat> about the, I had 158 and I was in my second thing of Cardio Miracle. Yes. Still supplementing with the D and K. Yeah. I retested and it dropped down to 78 and I completely stopped the drop. That's ideal. If you can maintain right there, that's just about ideal. You know, 75 to 100, anywhere in there is pretty, pretty ideal. You're right there. I think you've got this pretty well dialed in. Yeah, I'll figure out test late this fall and see where I'm at and go yeah. from there. 
Yeah, that, you know, vitamin D levels can change based on the season. That's why I test four times a year. Right Correct. now, I've, I've backed way off on my vitamin D supplementation. One, because I do the Cardio Miracle every day now. I'm really hooked on that. Uh, and that's... Yeah, me too. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking during the summer, I probably don't need the drops at all. I haven't tested. I mentioned this the other day. I don't know why I don't have a test wonder if something happened with my subscription. I better go check on that. I haven't tested in a while. I need to do that because I'm getting a ton of sunshine these days. I bet you'll be surprised then. Yeah, I might be. What else you got? Thank you for the product. Well, you're welcome. Thanks. That'd be about it. All right. Thanks for the call. Let's head off to... Press the right buttons here. Let's head off to Iowa for this call. Brad, welcome to the program. Hi, Kevin. I had a question about uh, getting lightheaded while I stand up. I have uh, I do the MD alignment, and um, sometimes I'm on job sites, uh, stand up quickly, and my vision almost starts to change and has to kind of grab something to steady myself. I didn't know what you would recommend, if that would be a, just a sign of weak adrenals, if I, if like the cardio miracle would kind of help me perk up, or if there's something in my yeah. diet I need to change. I'm doing paleo. Okay, so a couple things we could try, and I do think this is probably weak adrenals. We can measure this. You know, if you know somebody that has a true blood pressure cuff, not one of the automatic machines, but a true blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope and knows how to use it, we can measure this. And I could almost predict what your numbers are going to be. We have you lay down, we put the blood pressure cuff on, we take your blood pressure, we leave the cuff on, and we have you stand up and immediately we take it again. And in a healthy body, your blood pressure will go up when you stand up. And that is your adrenals kicking in so that you don't get dizzy when you stand up. That's the whole point. Um, So that's a pretty clear sign that we're probably not getting that adrenal response that we want. And this is what the protocol fixes. This is all. This is all the same thing. Our our stress is really physical. It's not nearly as mental as we thought. Now our thought processes can have an impact on our stress, but our stress is not in our brain. Our stress is in our hormone and endocrine system, and it's physical. And this is what it fixes. When when we say we have weak adrenals, that's that's kind of a. It's just a term we use. It doesn't really mean a lot. Um, but this is what we fix with this protocol. We strengthen the body's stress response, which is physical. And that's what you're seeing. Your, your body has a weak stress response. Now we've overworked our stress muscle to the point where it can't recover. Okay. And I notice how heart palpitations every once in a while too, especially when that's happening, you know, it kind of feels like my heart's about to jump out of my chest for a few seconds and then it kind of goes back to normal. The reason being is that this is a, a, a hormone cascade and your body is releasing all kinds of chemicals in response to this. And those chemicals absolutely have an impact on your heart, your heartbeat, your heart rhythm, your HRV, your heart rate variability. That is the, that is the measurement of how well our body can deal with stress, HRV. The higher we get that number, the better your body can deal with stress. I just ordered the Garmin watch from your store yesterday, so I'm going to start monitoring that and uh, see how that works out. Excellent. And that's about it. uh, Which I'll start with the stress protocol as soon as I can. uh, I'm not trying to supplement the fix, but would the Cardio Miracle help with that? Is it something where I'm like losing oxygen to the brain? That's kind of why I'm feeling dizzy for a slight... You know, you might want to try the cardio miracle and see if you see an improvement. It's not going to fix this. I can tell you that it won't fix this. I haven't found a supplement yet that fixes this. We have to do the physical work, but I have found supplements that support this and cardio miracle is one of them. Okay. Well, I'll get into the store and give it a shot. There you go. Call me back. Let me know how things are going. Now also get on the the stress protocol. Okay. Okay. I just I got on the website. I'm going to order a new Q2 and just try to get everything done because, like I said, I've been doing these MD alignments 
for about two years now. And I have, for most of the day, I'm sedentary. I have a full-time office job. And after hours, I go and do alignments. And there's been plenty of times, especially when out in the heat, you know, you stand up too quickly. And oh, yeah. The customer kind of looks at you <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah, they, think they, think, they think your eyes are going cross. I'm like, oh, sorry. It's got to go lightheaded. And they're like, all right, I understand. So. Yeah, you're staggering around. Hey, first off, congratulations on that that business doing the alignments. I love that. Let's take a minute and uh, and plug your, your service. Where are you? Give a phone number, a website, whatever you want to get out there. I'm not too terribly far from uh, Mike and Kevin. I'm down in southeast Iowa, Fort Madison, Iowa, to be exact. And I got a few local customers I take care of. Uh, my phone number is 319-316-3563. And my business is just called Walker Alignment. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, I, I've been listening to you for probably about four or five years, and I got turned in on uh, Mike's system, you know, and I was doing power built. Uh, tire alignments and COVID knocked that out. So I had to do something out on my own and that's kind of how I got this whole process started. Excellent. Excellent. I love that. So uh, are you listed yep. on their directory as well? I don't believe I am yet. Oh, I, you like need I said, to get I've been on doing there. this. For, yeah. I, uh, when I was at the Mid-America Truck Show this year, I met you and Kevin and I gave him the, my card, but I didn't try to press them too hard, you know. Oh, press I, I figured once press my word of, word of mouth word of mouth got out, and then people actually enjoyed what I was doing. You know, maybe they would put me on their website. Oh. I didn't want to just step in and say, "Throw me on your website." No, no. <laughs> in fact, what I want you to do when you get off the phone with me, I want you to call them and say, "Put me on your website." Absolutely, get up there. I will do that. Yeah. Now tell them Kevin gave me the order to tell you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate everything you do for all of us, me included. You've been a, a huge change in my life. I I was a type 2 diabetic, and I've been eating paleo since about 2020, and uh, I'm no longer on any kind of medications whatsoever for That's blood sugar. Awesome. And uh, the last few times I went to the doctor, actually, I was forced to go to the doctor here last month to uh, – to, uh, get my annual blood test. Otherwise my insurance company thought about dropping me. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I got the blood that, test done and all. The, there you go. All, Your insurance company has been covering you all those years. You were unhealthy. And now that you're getting healthy, they're going to drop you. That's hilarious. Yeah. Now, now, now that I give them money and don't cost them anything. <laughs> exactly. they, yeah, I get, yeah. I, I get a letter in the mail saying you haven't been to the doctor in almost two years. You That's need to go thing. get a, a checkup. Yeah. 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 I, and honestly, I got COVID back in January. I was down for three or four days, right back at it, you know. And honestly, I've never been a person to get real sick. But for the past two or three years, since I've kind of taken your advice on health and wellness and things like that, I've only gotten COVID. And that's the only time I've been down yeah. sick. Yeah, it's, it's you and know, I, it's so, I refuse to get the so jab, common. So. Good, good, yeah. Well, excellent results great to hear it keep it up but you got to get started on the stress busters protocol we got to come up with a good name for it too we haven't really formally named it stress busters or the stress protocol is how we're referring to it right now uh I, this may very well turn out to be the biggest thing we've done and part of that is because honestly i can't find this anywhere else Nobody else is doing anything. I've read, I've tried to read books on stress, try to take courses. Everybody takes the same approach. You have to avoid stress. It's not going to work that way, I can promise you. So this is a big, big project for us, and we're going to start getting the whole team involved. I've taken about as far as I can take it um, right now, and uh, now we'll get our team involved, and you'll really start to see some results, and I'm excited about this. But here's the thing. You got to do the work. You got to do the work, but I, I, I can promise you this is easy. It's not, you know, you're, it's not a two-hour session in the gym where you're sweating and miserable the whole time. It's just not. Um, oh, I, I want to make sure I, I'm going to circle this note. I want to make sure I come back to this, but I've got a lot of calls and they're piling up, so I want to get to them. Let's go to Phoenix. Adam, welcome to the program. Hey, Kevin. The reason for my call is I recently got a blood test back and my uh, triglyceride for 340. And I was just wondering what you think I could do to get that down. I've started keto. I'm in week two. Is there anything else I can do? Oh, so when you took this blood test, you were eating the standard American diet. 
Yes. Oh, well, yeah, there's a lot you can do, but you're already doing it. I mean, right now, eating keto will fi- will fix this. Eventually, it may make it worse in the beginning because triglycerides, what we're measuring is fat in your blood. And when you start to lose weight, your body transports fat through the blood. It breaks down fat and transports it around as triglycerides. So when we are losing weight... You should never even bother with a blood test, although your doctor will maybe force you to, because it's going to be, the number will be compromised. When you're losing weight, your triglycerides are going to be higher. You were eating the standard American diet, which is bad for your triglycerides, so that's why your number was high, but it may actually get worse. So I would tell you, unless somebody's forcing you, don't take any more blood tests for a while, Uh, but eating keto will start to fix this some people it will fix completely they can eat dirty keto their cholesterol looks good other people it does come down to food quality sometimes to get their cholesterol numbers better all right well i guess that's what i need to know i I appreciate it yeah just just keep doing what you're doing you're doing the right thing and it will work it always does but just know in the beginning the triglyceride number might actually get worse let's go to pennsylvania Zena, welcome to the program. Hi. Um, I spoke with you a little bit ago about my mom, uh, who has dementia, who just moved in with us, uh, started eating paleo like us, uh, low-carb paleo, and uh, then she she got Lyme, and she got over it, and she got COVID, and because I think she was on this diet, she kicked it really fast. Excellent. And I've noticed a huge difference in her. The Lyme has gotten better. I think that the new diet made her bounce back better because I was really worried about her getting COVID on the tail of the Lyme. Yeah. And so she is doing a lot better. I noticed a huge difference in her. So that's awesome. That was definitely key. Yeah. Thank you for the update. Now she is, yeah, and, and, and she's doing great, but she's still suffering a little bit of uh, like heart pain from, from the um, Lyme. Is there anything I can do for her for that? Um, Explain the pain. What 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 is she experiencing? How uh, often? Or it just periodically she'll just say, "Oh, it, it hurts here," and she kind of indicates towards her chest. Now I I am going to get her uh, maybe get her checked out to make sure because I know Lyme can do that. Yeah, that would be my first concern, and. You know, I know you can go to a traditional cardiologist and insurance pays for everything. And, you know, that's nice. But we know we're not going to get good advice from them either. I mean, they are just so quick to put people on drugs. Um, Mm -hmm. If Mm -hmm. if you could pull off a a consultation with Dr. Wolfson or one of his people, I would really recommend it. We're going to get much, much better advice. Uh, I, you know, I would okay. hate to have them recommend a blood thinner or who knows that, you know, that that's mm-hmm. just, it's their default. I mean, they, they reach for mm-hmm. that prescription pad every time. And I just hate to see people get caught up in that. Right. Well, they did put her on one more round of antibiotics, you know, hoping that that, you know, maybe that, that was still line kind of. Yeah. Lingering in the background. Yeah, and, and I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm not totally anti antibiotic. There are times where we absolutely need them. They're they're one of our better classes of drugs that actually fix something. You know, they are one of the drugs that actually addresses the root cause of the problem. The root cause of the problem mm-hmm. was she had, a, you know, the the virus, the bacteria. Um, that's the root cause and bio- antibiotics actually deal with the root cause. Unfortunately, we've abused them so badly that they're not nearly as effective as they should be anymore. And then the other thing, obviously, we've got to, you know, load her up with probiotics. You know, I would probably okay, be probiotic. taking two probiotic supplements, one traditional and one what we call um, soil-based. So we have each one mm-hmm. in our store, the Enviromedica Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, the Enviromedica Enviro probiotics, we have several of them. Those are all soil-based. And then our mm-hmm. BioDolph 7 is a traditional. So you could take those two. Even more important, if you can, load her up with fermented foods. Fermented foods. Uh, sauerkraut. We got lots of that. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, sauerkraut, real fermented pickles, yogurt, kefir, kombucha, mm-hmm. uh, everything with probiotics. Okay. 
And um, I had one more question. I know you've been talking about the HRV, but my my Garmin doesn't have that. It just has the body battery and the stress and stuff. And I wondered how I can, if there's another way I can interpret that. Yeah, there is. And actually, I'm still working on trying to correlate the raw HRV score because I had a weird reading the other day um, where my raw HRV score had gone down, but my body battery, I actually had a pretty good night and I I had a higher body battery than what I expected. So I got to go in and play around and see if I can figure that out. But we don't need that raw HRV score. For the last couple of years that I've been working on this, I didn't have it. This is a new update on the oh. second generation of watch. Um, and, yes. and I just noticed it a couple of weeks ago. So that's a brand new piece of information for me. So here's, here's, this is a good time to talk about this. Here's what we're trying to accomplish with this stress protocol. So there's two Two things that we're looking at when we look at body battery. That's what we're going to base most of our stuff on is the body battery. And then we can also look at stress because that has a direct impact on body battery. The lower you can keep your stress level, the more you can build body battery and the less you'll deplete it. If your stress levels are high, you're always going to be fighting against your body battery. So we want to be able to build body battery easily so we'd love to wake up every morning starting at 100 so how do we get there well uh, the only thing i've found that does it is this protocol nothing else i've tried works once we can get our body battery to 100 which i'm not capable of doing yet because sleep is an issue for me um, Mm -hmm. we want that body battery to last longer So one of the things that I was able to do when I was really weak, my HRV was really low. I was on the road. I wasn't being active enough. I just took like three days where I avoided stress completely. I actually played video games. For some reason, video games put me in a super (laughs) low stress. I don't understand why. And I was able to get my body battery up to 100. But before noon... The next day, it was down in the 30s again, and then by the end of the day, it was depleted. So just be, that's, that's why just avoiding stress doesn't work. I had to do almost nothing for three days to get it up that high, and then it was wiped out in, in less than a day. So what was the point? The protocol that I'm doing makes two things happen. One, you'll be able to build that number up quicker, and two, it won't deplete as fast. It's just like a muscle. It's the best analogy I can come up with. Now that I have other people doing this, we're starting to find some interesting stuff. Um, Fred, who calls quite often, uh, is, is working on this now. And he sent me his sleep scores. Oh, my God, am I envious. He's, his sleep score was an 86. He had two and a half hours of deep sleep. My God, if I can get 30 minutes of deep sleep, I'm having an awesome night. He got two and a half hours of deep sleep, two hours of REM sleep, and his in, in, in his entire seven hours, he was only awake six minutes. That's, a, that's an incredible score. And Fred's about my age. I think he's in his 50s. We tend to have more sleep issues as we get older. But here's the interesting thing. He had this awesome night of sleep, and his body battery only got up into the 50s. If I got that sleep, I could promise you I'd be at 100. No doubt I would be at 100. So he's sleeping good. And we know sleep and stress are really tied together and correlated. But I think for whatever reason, something about his stress muscle really needs working on. So he's just starting this protocol. We'll see his results. Wow. Sounds good. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I I love to hear the news, uh, good news on this. Um, That is awesome that your mom's starting to see improvements. And I think you just keep doing this. She'll continue to improve. And there's a lot of new evidence that, you know, even dementia can be improved. Not completely reversed. We haven't seen that. But plenty of improvement. 
Well, I noticed her getting perkier in the morning. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a really yeah. good sign. Great, great. Well, thank you so much for your help. You're welcome. And keep the updates coming. I love to hear, especially good news. Let's uh, let's go to Michigan. Sarah, welcome. Hey, Kevin. I am thinking about the protocol and trying to practice it on certain bases. Um, I got a rent, couple of wrenches for you okay. when we're dealing with teams that I need, to ha- I need help figuring out. Solo has to be, the, the truck has to stop for a certain amount of time so they could be at a truck stop, do the saw in the bag while they're doing the breathing, get up and do the X3, run in the truck stop, throw their sauna clothes or the, the, the towel pillowcase or whatever that it, you can get with the X, um, my high in the laundry, so wash and dry it while you're showering. Come back out, get a good sleep, or you know, do that right before you take off. Um, when a team is running, you have you have those issues. Yeah, you do. You, um, I mean, w- whether you're wearing clothes or you're wearing the, it, it's a big towel, a, a body sock, basically for anybody right. who doesn't right. doesn't know. Um, whether you're wearing that or you're wearing workout clothes, when you get out, it's dripping wet. You yes. can't just <laughs> hang it up and do, you, you want to throw it in the laundry right away. Um, so usually I just do the set in a hotel room, which um, recently we've been able to do more often kind of freight we're running. We're in a hotel maybe two, three times a week. Okay. So I make that happen then, but on the road, when you're running team freight and you can't stop, how you, how do you do that every day? I mean, I guess you would at that point. You just wouldn't. Like with A and E loads, you can't. But you may not. Yeah. So this is why I really want to get more people involved. Now I'm at this point where there are other things to try to work through, and this is a really good one. It for a solo driver, I think we have most of the issues worked out. And the other thing. We're going to have to remember, and especially, you know, you look at solo drivers, you're just going to have to take some time and get out of the truck for a little bit. You know, and I know sometimes we get in that mode, you run, 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 and then you're just so tired, you fall asleep, and you get up and you do it again the next day. We can keep doing that if you want, but it's not good for your health. It's just like eating the standard American diet. If you keep living that lifestyle, you're going to have problems. So we have to make that change. We have to say, okay, maybe I'm not going to run 4,000 miles a week or whatever it is I I try to shoot for every week. Maybe I need to say, no, I'm going to run this many miles instead, and I'm going to take some time throughout the week and focus on my health. The team driver, it just it's one more level of complication. But if you can get to the point where you are doing, look, I, I would even say, just so people understand, if you get to the point where you can only do this protocol once a week, do it. It's better than not doing it at all. Right. You may not get the, the results we're getting everywhere else, but you're going to get some results. If you can do this protocol three times a week, I, I, you're going to get amazing results. Now, again, in the beginning, I love this idea of just stack up as many days in a row as you possibly can. There's no danger of overtraining at that point. The, the results really encourage us. We, we see it. We feel it. If you can do that, I think it's the best way to get started. If you can't, just do the protocol mm-hmm. as often as you can. But you've done this in the past. When you start doing this, you come up with ideas that I won't come up with. I'm not there in a team operation doing this every day to try to figure it out. So that's why I depend on feedback from you and others that now it's time to go figure out how do we make this even easier to do on the road? Right. The whole, the, yeah, the most difficult part about that doing it every day on the road is not only do you need a place to take a shower when you're done, you kind of got to be able to throw something in the laundry yeah. at least every other day. Yeah, I because agree. You're going to have soap and wet stuff to deal with. Yeah, I, I I agree. Now I will say that our new tunnel format may solve this problem. 
It's a little more difficult to carry. Not that much, though. I mean, this is not that big. Mm -hmm. It actually ends up being two pieces that are probably that take up less space than the blanket itself. Um, but here's the other thing: I can go so in. So we the- could take the blanket out and replace it with the tunnel. Yeah, and here's the thing: the tunnel it has a really thin reflective mat that you lay down like a silver foil mat that you lay down and that's what you lay on and then the tunnel goes over you the only thing you touch is the mat and we don't have to wear clothes in the tunnel and we don't have to wear the body sock so i go you can in, just wipe it down i go in the tunnel completely naked now okay. i don't have clothes to deal with and all i have to do is wipe down that one mat I'd be done. Now, we still have a shower issue, okay. but we've at least solved the laundry issue with this one. Now, maybe we find, there maybe, you, go. you know, really cool natural towelettes you could do a quick, you know, kind of wipe down shower with. Maybe that's one of the options. I don't know, but I think we'll figure it out. Okay, there we go. Just wanted to throw that out there so we can think. I will... Um be interested and open to information on the tunnel setup when you get that more nailed down. Yeah, what's probably going to happen is we are probably going to, I know Lisa's working on it right now, we will probably release our own branded version of a tunnel first, and then we're working on the the idea of bringing other light sources into this tunnel. We're working with the manufacturer, but I think we'll probably just release our version of a tunnel and have that in the store first. Uh, And that may happen fairly soon. I know Lisa's already working on, you know, some orders and naming and all kinds of stuff that's got to get done. Um, So we may have something along those lines here pretty quickly. Okay. And then on the bad body battery, you said you ne- do you you never get to a hundred, or you rarely see it. Um, rarely, I have gotten to a hundred, but like I say, I have to really kind of work at it and I have to get away from stress for a while to do it. Um, I, I did get to the point, I'm kind of getting back to that point now where I can get 75 pretty regularly in the morning. And then by the end of the day, I'm, I'm still up above 20, which is a good sign. And that's improving every day now that I do the protocol. You know, I had an interesting experience this weekend. So I had been doing the protocol every day. I was seeing really good results. My numbers were getting better every single day. And last Friday, um, mm-hmm. I decided if I really work hard on the garden this weekend, I can finally get caught up. What I mean is I feel like I have been behind on the garden all, all season. I got back late. Um, we had goofy weather in the spring. I just, I feel like I've been behind. And I'm like, it, it, you know, it's time to plant the fall garden right now. And if I just take a couple of days, really work at it, I can get caught up. And I did. I'm totally caught up in the garden. I'm really happy where I am. But I worked about 10 hours in the garden on Friday after the show. I worked probably another eight to 10 in the garden on Saturday and probably six on Sunday. Now, when I look at that, that, activity in the garden it seems like it's the perfect workout it's light to moderate for long periods of time we've always been told that's really good conditioning i've even said that's probably as close to what our day looked like as a hunter gatherer kind of those three days totally derailed me it did not help me at all it hurt me my i had finally gotten my hrv up over 50 it hasn't been over 50 in a couple of years finally got my hrv over 50 doing the protocol within those three days i had dropped down to the low 40s and my hrv went from strong and balanced to low and unbalanced in just three days and that's because i mm-hmm. haven't built that stress muscle strong enough yet to deal with that but the idea that 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 kind of activity would eventually make us healthier doesn't look like it'll happen. It looks like even that you can overtrain doing nothing but that. And it wasn't intense. It was just a long, moderate, you know, couple days of activity. And it, it just absolutely wiped me out. 
So um, I, my body battery wouldn't even get over 50 for a couple days. I think last night I finally got it back up to 76 again or 70, pretty close to that. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't see 100 very often. And I have to work hard at it. I, I, how low have you gotten it? Um, you said you have seen zero? I can't remember if I've ever seen zero. I know I've seen low sing, single digits, like three, four, five, that kind of thing. I When we left out of uh, Michigan last Friday morning, like midnight, to pick up a load, um, I was driving along and all of a sudden I felt like I had something in my throat and I couldn't clear it. And, and then I went, oh, crap, picked up some bugs over the last couple of days. And by the end of, let me see, I think on Friday, I started the day in the 50s, because the day before I was busy running around doing errands. Um, by the end of Friday, I was at 8. Yeah. And yeah. Saturday, my I went from 8 to 5. So 5, all the way across the day. No recoup on energy whatsoever. Right. We, so we just checked into a hotel for the weekend and just tried to rest. All I did was lock the dogs and come back in and rest. Yeah. And so Saturday was just five straight across with stress, the uh, orange stress line all the way up in the 80s and 90s most of the day. Yep. Sunday, it looked like that for about half the day. And close to midnight, I had gotten up to 77. Monday morning when we got up, I hit a high of 99. Nice. Um, but then we got up and started working and I had high stress the rest of the day and it got down to 20, um, <laughs> right. 29. Yeah. I'm at a high of 29, low of nine again. And it's just, I do see 90, you know, peaks of 99 and a hundred once in a while. And it stays middle of the road most of the time. It's those times when you get down to the single digits, you can really feel it. You just don't want to move. Well, and here's the interesting thing about this and why we know this is such an important measurement. You had mentioned getting a bug, something, you know, you, you, you felt it. When you get sick, it, I was sick for those four days. I monitored Lisa's when she was sick for a little while. You can forget your body battery is going to tank and nothing you do brings it back until you beat whatever it is you're fighting. Mm-hmm. I had a, now that we're talking about this, I had another really ex- strange experience this week with the stress level number. So... When I first started working on the protocol, I was staring at that stress number constantly. What does this do? What does that do? What happens when I breathe? What happens when I retain? And I had clear patterns. I knew exactly what affected that stress level. And I would even talk about when I work out, I can shoot it right up into the 90s to 100. And that's what we're trying to do. The heat takes me right up into the 90s. The cold shower takes me up into the 90s. And that's kind of the point. That's what's building our stress muscle by doing that methodically over and over and over. So I got to the point where when I came back to the protocol this time and got really serious about it and started doing it every day, I wasn't watching that at all. I kind of figured I've already learned a lot. You know, I don't need to stare at that thing all the time. I'm just going to do the protocol now. So I was doing the protocol and I just had one of those really good days Like I felt incredible while I was doing the breathing. I felt really strong. My mood got just really improved. I felt amazing. So then when I went into the workout, I was like really pushing. I mean, I was truly going to failure and then doing five more partials and it was burning. And I I could just tell it was a really good workout. I mean, I, I... So I I just kept pushing. I finished the whole workout. And when I was done, my heart rate was through the roof. I was breathing hard. I felt amazing. And I thought, man, I'll bet my stress level is just, you know, I'm probably pegged at 100 right now. So I looked at my watch. My stress level was seven. And as I was watching it, it went to five to two and then to zero. Now I am sitting here sweating, breathing hard, trying to recover, and my stress level was at zero. 
I've never seen anything like that. And I'm going to have to try to recreate it. Have I made enough improvements now that my body could handle that kind of physical activity and end up being at zero stress? It's kind of like the whole video game thing. I don't get it. I think that it could be, um, you know, in the past, we always thought stress was mental. It's things your brain is going through. It's your experience of work and family and all this stuff. And now we're seeing that, we, as we know, physical there can be physical stressors. And we can improve our mental outlook with physical exercise. And, they, you know, it's, it's both of them. In the beginning, you were struggling trying to figure out what does this do? What does that do? What does this do? And that in itself was a stressful. You're now right. when you're doing, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Now when you're doing the the protocol, you're like, I know this is going to make me feel better. This is good. So your attitude is is more positive and more, so to speak, stress free in that moment because you're just doing what you know is going to make you feel good. And you look at it and it's like, hey, I do feel good. That makes sense. That makes so sense. That maybe that's what's going together. on. Yeah. And again, I think that in the beginning, in the very beginning, everything depletes our body battery. And as you start to build the stress muscle, just like we build a muscle and it gets stronger and then working out is easier. It's the same thing here. So I think I'm actually starting to see, and I didn't expect results like that. I never thought I'd be able to push that hard and actually lower my stress level. That's a pretty interesting, uh, Result, so I'm gonna just have to try to see if I can recreate it. Yep, more just like the post I made the other day of um, I shared. Uh, Chris Kresser had an article on paleo diet versus following a paleo template. Everything is individual, and we just need to experiment, experiment, experiment with what works for us. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that. that that's a really good point. And, but we have to know how to experiment too, you know? So mm-hmm. that, um, I, I, I am just, I, I'm really excited about the new devices on the market and Garmin's right there leading this. We're able to get readings and numbers we just couldn't get before. We used to have to guess at all this stuff. Now we're not guessing anymore. I'm looking at the reading. No, this makes your stress go up. This makes your stress go down. This makes your stress muscle stronger. Uh, we actually now have data that we can we can use, and it's really helpful. And that that's, that's where the tribe comes in. All working yes. together, we can learn more as we go. Yep. But um, I'm going to let you guys go, and we'll talk to you again soon. Everybody have a safe drive today. Excellent. All right. We will talk to you soon. Uh, let's see. We are at the top of the hour. Lauren is here. I think what I'm going to do, we have two calls on the line. Lines are open. I'm going to restart the show so we can uh, kick off after hours with Kevin and Lauren. We're not going to restart the phones, so you can keep dialing right now. Won't hurt anything. And if you're on hold, Michael and Jim, hold on. We'll get to you uh, right after we bring Lauren in and restart this. So I'm going to wrap up Destination Health here for the day. Great stuff. We're going to continue on uh, with that topic. We'll answer some questions. I believe Lauren wants to talk about minerals today. Uh, very important topic. We're always dealing with that. So we've got a lot coming up. Don't go away. We will be right back. Be safe, be profitable, be fit and healthy. Always do the hard work and master the journey.